it's time for a town of Bedford vlog. We, my partner over there and I, are heading into the town of Bedford. We're gonna take a look at some houses that are on the market, some houses that have sold. We're gonna take a look at the town, some shops, some stores, some places to eat, and we're gonna start at Beals right after this. Why not? Oh man. All right, Beals is open four to 10. <laughs> no, no, no! All right, we're gonna find another place to eat. Then we'll sit and chat. Plan B, we should call it plan A for Azul's and Beals should be plan B, but here we are. All right, we made it. We are at Azul. Let's try again. All right, we gotta look at this thing right here. You want me to look at it right now? You don't have to, but when you do look, look at this. Don't look at that. Okay. All right, we made it. We are at Azul, first time. Mm -hmm. We got some chips and queso. Very good. In Bedford. Uh, right on Main off Street. 221, yeah. Main Street. All right, so when we're done here, we're gonna take a walk down Main Street. We're gonna hit some uh, antique places, some, I don't know, whatever they're called. I guess antique places. And we're gonna hit a new Electrico Market and Gallery. I think I'm looking at the wrong spot again. <laughs> Electrico Market and Gallery. Really cool new place. We're gonna hit that too. And while we're here, we're gonna talk about Bedford. There you go. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh man, that looks good. Now, they're not overly busy today, so I got three tacos, two bourbon with the shrimp, and I threw in um, Bangkok. So we're gonna eat this, and I'm not gonna let you watch me eat it the whole time. We'll eat a little bit, and then we'll come back and talk before we hit the road. We finished up at Azul. It's kind of like a Chipotle place. I'd say so. Chipotle place, higher end Chipotle place. And I made a mistake. So it's not Main Street. This is Bridge. Back there's Main Street. Bridge goes down to Main and then Main is it intersects it. So <clears throat> we're gonna take a walk up and down Bridge. We're gonna hit Main Street, take a look at some areas and uh, jump in and out of some shops just to show you what the town of Bedford looks like. All right, we are just walking around Bell Treasures and we just talked to Miss Bell, Ginger Bell, the original Bell, who opened this place in 2006 and has changed hands three times, she said, but still open, still lots of cool stuff. And we got a lot of Got a little places like this in uh, Bedford for you to walk around and shop and spend your money and furnish your house. Oh. How much for the mini? 15. Swap Shop, if you watch it on Netflix, would buy this in a heartbeat. There you go. Swap Shop it. Swap Shop it. David. Yeah. Be honest, okay? Yeah. Would you date her? A little old for me. Oh my gosh, she is fine. All right, we are gonna take a jump down this side street and we're gonna go take a look at Electrico Art. I promise we're gonna get to houses. We're gonna go drive by some houses and take a look at that. But I wanna show you uh, Electrico Art and there's no good rule. Oh yeah, I guess there is. There's a sidewalk over there, but I'm not walking on a sidewalk.
Oh, there's the bottom of Bell Treasures. All right, we are across the street from Electrico Art. We'll go in there in a second. We'll do a little quiz here, see if David has any idea. I looked it up, so I know. David, okay, you, can you guess the square miles of the town of Bedford? The town of Bedford, square okay. miles. Keep in mind, the town, the city of Lynchburg is 50 square miles. The town of Bedford, square miles. I'm gonna go with 12. That's actually really good. So it's um, it's not 12, it's 10. No, it's not. <laughs> Hold on a second. It's 8.75. I don't know why I said 10. It's 8.75. The population adds up the 2020 census. Of the 8.75 square miles. Yes. I would say 7,400. Oh my gosh, this is pretty good. It is uh, about 6,600 and something was the 2020 census for the town of Bedford. Um, 8.75 miles. The town was incorporated in like 1780 something, I think. And it was, it was kind of weird. It went like from a town to a city to a town to a city to a town, something like that. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's a town now. It's the town of Bedford. So, um... Trying to think of a better Give way. Give me another to... one. Come on. I'm, I'm money. How many active houses are for sale right now in the town of Bedford? Easy. Our friend at lunch told me. Ten. Yeah, no, your friend at lunch didn't tell you. He said nine, he thought. I said ten. How many are pe how many are pending? Under contract. Pending. Three. Eight. Dang it. And how many sold in the past three months? How many houses within the town limits? 21. Have sold, 21. Okay, I don't remember. Let me look it up on my phone here. I have a little sheet saved. 18. 18 houses have sold. And we are gonna drive by some of the houses, but I do wanna show you Electrico Gallery and Art Place and bistro i'm gonna walk through the bistro just to show you the decor it's really cool i don't think they're open yet for lunch i think they're only open at like four o'clock like beals and we're going to talk about beals and we are going to talk about beals because beals has some cool history maybe we'll go sit back in the parking lot before we leave and tell you about beale's myth <laughs> maybe maybe it's real let's go in electrico art okay we are inside electroco bistro nice light coming in we were just sitting across the street talking but check this out and you got the little you got the bar area back here. We got the kitchen. That's Chef Thomas back there. We're gonna head downstairs. Just a quick, give you a quick overview of um, Electroco Market where they sell things. But I wanna show you the featured artist. All right, back into the featured artist area where they have displays. These are really something. Really great pieces. Oil on paper, those are for the featured artists right now. And then they have the gallery here where they have displays up all the time. And there's the owner, Wendy. Thank you, JD. You're welcome. All right, a quick trip downstairs to see the market. Then we're going to head out.
guys. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. So here's our downstairs portion of Electroco Market, where they have different, why don't you stop right there? They have different handmade, unique gifts All right, you guys want to see some houses. Let's get after some houses. We're going to head over to a house that is actively for sale and give you a, a glimpse of what an available property looks like right now. Now, to recap, 10 active properties right now inside the town of Bedford. Eight are currently under contract pending. 18 have sold since March. So we're turning down here Main Street and I'll give you a little glimpse through my dirty windshield. The National D-Day Memorial, I'll tell you about that as we're on our way too. The National D-Day Memorial is amazing. You should head there. It is uh, to commemorate, to remember, the landing at uh, Normandy, June 6th, 1944. So the reason that that's such a big deal here in Bedford is the town of Bedford lost more servicemen per capita than any other community in the country. So the, the D-Day invasion was the largest land, air, and sea offensive ever and 150,000 servicemen, I believe it was. I think if I had the number right, we'll make you do some homework. 38 people, servicemen, from Bedford took part in that. 19 were killed on D-Day. So the Bedford boys, as they are known, are widely revered, and the National D-Day Memorial is amazing. You should definitely go there. Tickets are $12 if you buy them on site or they're ten dollars if you get them online and we are driving right past where you go into the d-day memorial i'll show you the house we're going to look at is less than a mile away let me throw you out the sunroof and give you a little bit of a visual on the way to the house. We're gonna give you a look here at a property that's available as we speak if you want to buy this it might not be available when you watch it but it's available while i'm making it it's a three bed three bath 1700 square feet and it's priced at 259.9 hello david miller exp All right, so this is it. Walk in, little split foyer area. I'll give you some more numbers on some other houses as we're sitting here talking, but walk upstairs into this wide open kitchen, living room area. Not bad, three and three. Looks like they had some surround sound going on. Linoleum, vinyl plank, linoleum, some tile in the bathroom. So again, this is three bed, three bath, 1,700 square feet, 259.9. In this general area, we also have a couple new construction homes. Three bed, two bath, 
2,200 square feet about. One of them at least has a basement, I know that. Priced at 319. Now, I'm not allowed to show you those, no permission. But they're available currently, new construction in this very neighborhood. And let me tell you about Bedford, for example, uh, for where we are, where we're located. You like that fan back there? I don't like it. Let's see if I can turn and change it. All right, let me tell you about Bedford. We are right in the middle. David, what are we in the middle of? What's the town of Bedford in the middle of? Geographically. Virginia. Okay, he's very bad at this. Um, we are south of the Blue Ridge Mountains. We are north of Smith Mountain Lake. We are east of Roanoke and we are west of Lynchburg. Sits right in the middle. And right now we came to this house. This house is about seven minutes from where we were at, right downtown. Very close to the D-Day Memorial that we talked about. So depending on where you're going, school, work, wherever, the town of Bedford might be a good place for you to consider. Let's look at a couple more numbers. So interestingly, interestingly, on Woodhaven Drive. All right, here's a couple little interesting homes for you. April of this year, a house on Woodhaven Drive closed on April 19th, $195,000. That house was three bed, two bath, 1,100 square feet. It was on the market for four days, built in 1970, and it sold at 108% of the list price. Also on that street, curiously enough, and I tried to figure it out, I'm not exactly sure why, also closed in April, shortly before that first house, three bed, one bath, sold for $190,000 at only 90% of the list price. It was built in 1975, very similar, but it didn't have the extra bath and it was on the market for 102 days. Interesting. Sometimes you'll see these houses on the market. There's one now that's been on the market for a number of days, 60 days, something like that. But when you read the remarks, sometimes only under the agent remarks, you'll see that it's currently rented for a year. So some people don't wanna buy that and have a renter and some people are looking for a primary home. So that could be a reason why something sits for a number of days. But in today's market, and more so a month or two ago, to sit for 100 days is really unusual. So unless it's not priced right, or there's something going on funky with the foundation, or there's a renter there that they can't get out, or something like that, it's a long time to sit. We have one that's three bed, one bath, 1290 square feet, almost 1300 square feet, built in 1944 for 1599. We have, we, they run the gamut. And then there's one that sold, just to give you an example of prices. So you're looking in the ones, the mid ones, all the way up to the five. One of these houses sold was a five bed, five bath, 4,300 square foot place. And it sold for 545,000 at 110% of the list price in three days. So that one went quick. All right, we have our driver doing some fancy footwork, wheel work, magic, whatever. But here's an example of things you need to take into consideration whenever you're looking at a house. Of course, we have our, our, our driver struggling over here. Uh, hey, it's that dude. <laughs> this is the way you're supposed to do it. Why? All right, so whenever you look at a house, what are you looking at? You're looking at cost. You're looking at uh, size. You're looking at maybe a basement or no basement. You're also looking at location. So right now we are on 460. And we are going to loop around and I'm gonna show you this house, like where it sits in, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Proximity to the road. In proximity to the road. How about that? Now keep in mind, this is a three bed, two bath, built in 1956. I love that year. I like that 50s, 60s house. 
built in 1956 almost 1200 square feet it does have three acres but watch watch what what we're going to show you here and it's listed at 279.9 279.9 i'm gonna stick the uh, gopro out the window so you can get a sense of it So that's it. I mean, you got all those numbers, almost three acres. I gotta look at the parcel, see where it sits, but three bed, two bath, it's all great, but right on the road. You may not care about that. And if you don't care about that, that might be a great place for you. But it might sit there a little bit because a lot of people do care about that. So we're gonna take a drive by one more to take you a look at Take a drive by one more and show you what that area looks like. Okay, while we are on our way to that other house we're gonna take a look at, let me tell you about Beals. I had no idea about this. David, do you remember the first time I bought Beals beer? Yeah. Do you remember why I bought it? Yeah, it says uh, on top of the gold lager that they have, it said, you found it. Yeah. It said you found it and I was like oh I found it I guess I was looking for this or whatever I had no idea what the marketing is it's brilliant so Beals barbecue or brewery or both in Bedford excellent food where we tried to go earlier they, they did their theme off of a gentleman named Thomas Beal who legend has it in 1880s sometime he and a group of men like 20 or 30 people went out to what was then new mexico possibly now colorado they came across all this gold treasure so beals is named after thomas beal and their their one lager is called beals gold and they put right on the on the packaging you found it all playing off that treasure hunting thing so did you know that david did not know that so, the legend has it is that Thomas Beale brought back all this gold, which today could be worth a hundred million dollars. Gold, jewelry, diamonds, something like that. He buried it in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains. So as you're looking at the peaks of Otter from Bedford, you could be looking at a hundred million dollars of treasure. So what he did was he buried it, he created three ciphers and the one cipher described what exactly was in the treasure the one cipher described the location and the one cipher described who was the owner and who was the heir of these different of the different treasure parts pieces whatever he allegedly created these ciphers at a uh, saloon bar something in montvale then he took the ciphers, put them in a box, took them to a um, bar owner in Lynchburg. And what they didn't say bar owner, I forget what they called it, like, uh, I don't know, coffee shop. No, it wasn't a coffee shop. They took him to this bar guy in Lynchburg. He said, don't do anything with these unless 10 years go by and I or one of my guys don't come back for it. So 10 years passed, some other time passed. The guy finally opened it. I forget what year. He couldn't figure out the cipher, saw all the ciphers. He got a friend of his who uh, figured out one of the ciphers. And I think the cipher that he figured out was the, the um, contents, what was in this treasure. So now the game is trying to figure out the cipher in this paper called Beale's Papers that was printed in like 1885 or something like that. Trying to figure out the cipher of where exactly the treasure is located. So a pretty cool story. Don't know if it's true or not. Probably like Oak Island where you're never going to find whatever they say is buried. But Beale's is really good. I love it. All right, we are about two minutes from this other house I'm going to show you. Let me grab my let me grab my phone with my data on it and uh, tell you about this place. So now this is a three bed, two bath, eighteen hundred square feet. 
0.5 acres built in 1991. And let's look at the difference, the location difference. This one is priced at 249.9. Now, uh, admittedly, I didn't show you the insides of these places, so you can go take a look at them and uh, look them up on on Zillow or Realtor. Or if you're interested, if it's if, if it's piquing your curiosity, by all means, um, give me a call and I'll I'll take a look at them a little more closely. But let's uh, I'm gonna throw you out the sunroof for a second and show you the uh, street we're driving down. What we're finding is this is a cul-de-sac. Take a look at this. I mean, come on, are you kidding me? Um, no brainer for me. I'd much rather live down here. Again, don't know what the inside looks like. I don't know how much work has to be done, but I don't want to live right on the road like that other one. So. All depends what you want, what you're looking for. Whatever you're looking for, we can help you find it. That's why I brought my partner along. I can find it. He is also licensed in the great Commonwealth of Virginia. So if you have any questions about any houses, if you're thinking about moving to the area, and maybe you don't want to be in Lynchburg, maybe you don't want to be in Roanoke, but you do want to have the proximity to get back and forth to either Bedford, the town of Bedford, perfect, lovely, lots of nice places here, wide range of houses and prices and things that you can look for, it's a great option for a lot of people. So, if that's you, you see the number, you see the email, and I would be happy to connect you with young David over there, the star from the artwork and we can get you connected and take care of you for all your real estate needs in, around, close to, nearby the Lynchburg, Virginia area, including Bedford. We'll see you next time.